I'm here in Hawaii on the Kona Island for the all new Tacoma launch. And I'm here with this good looking gentleman, Sheldon Brown, who's the chief engineer of the all new Tacoma. So we're gonna get right into the nitty gritty, starting with the technical. This is on TNGAF, which is Toyota's global truck platform, their current one. And it's, it underpins the Sequoia and the current generation Tundra. That's correct. What did you have to do to make it fit for a vehicle that is like this, the Tacoma? Different package, different wheelbase. Yeah, that's a great question. So fundamentally, uh, the TNGF platform, of course, it's an all box structure, right? That's the same as we saw in Tundra and, and Sequoia uh, using a ladder frame. Um, the silhouette is identical between uh, the full size and the compact series. However, what we're able to do, of course, is shorten the frame length based on, of course, wheelbase differences. And then important is we actually can gauge down uh, the material because we don't need as much strength as, for example, the full-size truck. And we have something uh, on the, the TNGA, which is called Dejima welding, or these are laser welded blanks, where we're able to actually use thicker uh, laser welded blank patterns in there where we have high stress areas throughout the frame. So overall, on the areas where lower stress, gauge down and then use that Dejima welding to, to bring uh, more strength in those critical areas. Compared to the outgoing Tacoma, which is much loved, mm -hmm. bomb-proof V6, structurally from a chassis perspective, what advantages will a consumer see? Yeah, so first and foremost, frame rigidity is dramatically increased, right? So then we also, compared to the, uh, the Tundra, we actually were about 90 millimeters shorter in the front overhang which made us actually, we had to sort of redevelop and redesign the number two cross member and how we attach the front stabilizer bar. But what the customer is gonna get out of this with the multi-link rear suspension is much better lateral performance, on-road ride, ride and handling, and then of course we have really good frame flex and basically wheel articulation. And that's important to notice because on the, on the full size truck, we really pushed the suspension and the kingpin to make sure that we had stability during towing. But on the compact series, we're more closely, uh, the Kingpin is more closely mirrored to what we did with Land Cruiser, where we focus on suspension articulation. When it comes to the interior and exterior dimensions, mm -hmm. how has the, I guess, usability of the cabin changed? One of the complaints people had with the prior generation Tacoma, other than it being a million years old, sure. was it didn't fit all body types. Yeah, absolutely. So we honestly, understand, we recognize that. So the, there was a couple of different issues that we wanted to address. So first and foremost, we wanted to basically raise the customer up. So it's something that we call heel to hip ratio, right? So basically from when you're in your seated position, your foot, your heels here to the, to the relative position of your hip, we basically increased that by about 30 millimeters. We then raise the actual uh, roof of the truck another 30 millimeters to make sure that we maintain that. But we didn't stop there because the other piece of that is for the adjustability. So the telescoping, I'll say the in and out or the, the fore aft telescoping, as well as the up down of the steering wheel so you can find that comfortable position. And then finally, all of the trucks will have vertical adjustability in the seats. So even on the entry grades, you get the manual adjustment. You move into the, uh, the higher grades where you get to the power seat. You give the ability to move up, down, and then you get the eight-way power, so. You still have the bed flexibility. The old truck can go short, long bed, and you can go crew cab and smaller cab as well, correct? That, that's right. We have our double cab, which is our, our traditional four-door. Uh, we got rid of the access cab, and we've adopted the extra cab. So our two wheelbases are, are uh, 3350, and that is for our uh, double cab with uh, a five foot deck. Then you can get the extra cab with a six foot deck. And then you also still have the ability to get the double cab with the six foot deck, which extends our wheelbase to 3685. Oh, wow. So there's great flexibility with the short in that regards. Yeah. Let's talk about suspension, if you're okay moving on to that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So suspension, you have different suspension layouts or tuning and calibration physical parts on okay. every trim level of truck, going Pretty from much. your entry level, which you adopted a leaf for, That's right. all the way up to this baby behind us, the Trail Hunter. That's exactly Can you walk me through all the different grades and sort of the priorities? Yeah, so um, it was really important what you brought up because um, on the entry grade truck, I had a ton of people come to me and say, look, you know what? I love a truck. I don't have a concern in the way a truck rides. I'm looking for something that is value you know, driven and, and basically serves my needs to, to haul stuff around. And so we really wanted to make sure that we were being very sensitive to that entry level customer. So new to the F1, platform is the adoption of this uh, rear leaf that you suggested. So most of our competitors, that's what they're running across all of their vehicles, but in our particular case, that's in our entry grade. Now, the clever part to that, and to make sure that this all worked, is we had to keep the same fundamental frame silhouette. We're able to actually use an underslung leaf, and by doing that, we can basically just punch uh, holes for the hangers 
and then we can adopt the, the, the leaf spring. So that was critical to make sure that we didn't, you know, drive additional costs through additional investment. Manufacturing complexity as you well. You got it, exactly. So make it very, very simple. Um, so the next, then you move into our SR grade, which is still a great uh, twin, du uh, twin tube of damper, uh, great system. Again, you start to get to the multi-link at this case now. Uh, much, much better ride and handling, much better isolation and performance. We move into the ORP, we get into our, uh, our Bilstein monotube with an actual piggyback reservoir. Wow. And then, of course, you move into next level, we have our limited, and we bring in adaptive variable uh, suspension in this case. So this, of course, allows us to adjust, um, actively adjust the, the rear and front uh, absorbers. Now, then we go to our premium trucks, our Halo, right? And this is what this is one of our two Halos. Of course, TRD Pro, everyone's uh, familiar with that. We're running our Fox uh, system in that particular truck. It has the new QS3, so it's actually uh, adjustable to three different settings. Um, that really uses three fundamental zones, if you will. There's basically a, a, a bound and a rebound. We, uh, in, we basically increase the damping efforts there to avoid bottoming or topping, depending on, on the stroke. And then we have the sort of center zone that's really focused on ride comfort. We pair that also with a uh, hydro jount stopper in the rear as well. So that is really our premium off-road, high-speed, adrenaline sort of focused TRD Pro. New, of course, is the Trail Hunter. We're standing here in front of the Trail Hunter. And Trail Hunter was all about, you know, going far, doing it in comfort, and making sure that the vehicle uh, is equipped to be heavily laden. And so we wanted to tune those suspensions differently, right? If you want a truck that's about racing and going fast versus a truck that's really about carrying a load, doing it well, and doing it off-road. Uh, and that was really the genesis. Rock crawling versus more Baja, or is it? Exactly, yeah, right? Think about, like, we want that TRD Pro to be light and to be able to run, run fast, right? And it's all about, it is Baja-inspired, adrenaline-fueled, right? This truck is really more of that overlanding type of truck. So we, we expect folks are going to carry quite a heavy load. It's going to be well-laden. We're going to probably have a little bit higher center of gravity because we're going to have rooftop tents and, and deck racks and things of that nature. So we turn to some... Uh, partners who we thought had, you know, really authentic parts in the field. Um, one of those is ARB and of course Old Man Emu. Uh, they're, you know, kind of world renowned for some of the suspensions that they do, especially in Australia. Uh, and we wanted to bring them in house and start to work with them to develop the suspension. We wanted this to be a marriage, right, between the best of what the aftermarket has and of course all of the nuance and, and understanding of what we have in, in, in the OE standards and basically bring that directly to and the And development customer. resources. You got it. It works really <laughs> well together. That's right. And honestly, I think it was a really symbiotic relationship because, you know, we're really being able to take both of these, put it together. But of course, it's very much tuned to this, this particular truck. So very bespoke to our truck model. And uh, we're using their uh, end zone, um, basically, technology. So we have really uh, two different zones. We've got, again, three of the uh, jounce and then on the rebound two zone. So again, that is to balance that ride and to have you know increased damping when you need it, especially heavily laden, moving quick off road or in those tactical areas, but then making sure that it's nice and soft and supple when you're on road. Obviously that's a huge compromise to deal with body control and ride control mm -hmm. in an off road large vehicle that Absolutely. is a ladder frame chassis. Mm -hmm. Do you guys still maintain like in your prior generation, the, I guess, aluminum A-arms and the higher trim levels? That's exactly right. Both of these um, do have a forged aluminum upper control arm. And two things that we get with that, obviously more strength. And because we have more strength, we can actually increase the clearance. So specifically on the rebound, where you know these trucks are also lifted, right? So we tend to lose a little bit of that, that rebound stroke. We can get, recover about 15 millimeters of rebound stroke by doing that. Moving on to chassis and drivetrain. And then, again, thank you for playing the thousand question game with us. No problem. Um, let's start with differentials and sure. four wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. Do you, in the work truck or the entry grade mm -hmm. variant it's rear drive only correct uh, rear drive with optional four wheel you, you can get a two wheel drive and you can get a four wheel drive as well that's correct and then moving up you can get four wheel drive with and without lockers correct that's right in our off-road we do offer an e-locker in the rear and then when you move into our off-road product we also uh, adopt a um, the ability to disconnect the front stabby bar so of course that gives you about 10 percent more articulation on the front and then you are actually able to, while well, it doesn't actually change the amount of articulation on the rear, but in that sort of off, sort of camber situation, you can actually realize another 15% of, of articulation in the rear. Did you guys carry into the next generation of MTS or what Toyota calls multi-train select? 
We do. In fact, um, that'll be very similar. So I would tell you that the, we have both a multi-terrain select as well as the crawl control on the part-time four-wheel drive vehicles. Uh, one of the cool parts about that for both of these now is they are active in four high. And as many of you remember, the, the crawl control is effectively you know, a four low type of thing. And that's where we use that most, but the multi-terrain select, we can use it in four high or four low. And it's using the brakes primarily, correct? Primarily, that's right. Using the brake together uh, and the wheel speed spent sensors. And, and of course, we have algorithms that are based on um, unique, uh, obviously, uh, I'll say, you know, environments or traction environments, whether it's rock or sand or mud. And then we actually uh, will bring to this one, which is a little bit unique, is this sort of um, blended version where it's a, a mixed terrain. And that allows you the opportunity to, it, it, it recognizes it might be a little bit of gravel, a little bit of sand or a little bit of mud. So this is a, a kind of a, I'll say, a, a, a more generic uh, multi-terrain selection. You're using, I imagine, the this being on your latest electronic architecture, all the body control modules, C, slip, and yaw, is that essentially how you're... It is. So um, this is actually what we would call our, our 19 version 2. So the Tundra was on version 1. The Tacoma will be on the next version of that. So there are some upgrades that allows us to use our TSS-3, which is our all-new and safety latest system. and greatest safety system. That's right. Yep. Dri Let's talk about engines or drivetrains. Sure. You have manual and automatic, 8-speed automatic, 6-speed mm -hmm. manual. You have, I guess, two drivetrains, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the 2.4 with high and low output variants. That's right. And then you have your hybrid max, which is the 2.4 with a small battery pack and electric motor, That's right. correct? iForce Max is uh, common to the, 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 the F, or I should say the F platform vehicles, and that pairs the one motor hybrid uh, with the, in our case, the L4 Turbo and the 8AT. Um, it's the same one motor hybrid, um, the actual motor and the battery that we use in Tundra and Sequoia. Of course, those are paired with a, a 10 AT and, and a, of course a V6 turbo in that particular case. But we carry that down the line. Obviously, it gives us a lot of uh, a lot of control and a lot of torque, which is really great for what we're doing, especially off-roading. Big 33-inch tires, a lot of mass. We love that low-end torque, and it's really great complement uh, to the turbo because when that turbo is starting to spool up, before it even gets ready to spool up, you've got that instantaneous torque that the motor provides. You know how important that is for off-roading. The electric motor in this is sitting between the bell housing and the actual motor itself, correct? That's correct, yeah, that's right, exactly right. How, at the risk of sounding too Dungeons and Dragons or yeah. nerdy. <laughs> no, I um, the no such thing. <laughs> the four popper, the, the four cylinder, the two yeah. four, you have three different outputs. You have the manual output, which is slightly lower than the 8 AT or the 8 speed automatic, mm. and then the uh, work truck or entry level variant, which is the lowest output. Are there any physical differences between the actual engine and any of those models? Do you strip some content out on the. the yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that question because sometimes that gets a little bit confusing. So let's start with the entry level. Uh, and so the entry level, of course, still paired with. Uh, our, our 8A team. Um, but as you well know, when we start to think about engines, right, uh, for my super technical term, the whirly bits cost a lot, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, it's the turbos, it's the, the, the cylinder heads and the pistons, all of that stuff we want to try to carry over and use as much as we can, right? Because there's a lot of capital investment for that. Um, so we want to make that the same, but when we depower those, we can start to think about the total vehicle system, right? So the amount of heat rejection, the amount of NV remediation that we need to do. Um, so there are different things that we can do to reduce the overall system cost if we can bring down peak power and, and peak torque. So for in this case, we're able to, for example, remove an oil cooler. Uh, we're able to remove a number of NV uh, remediation because of, as you know, four cylinders tend to be a little bit more uh, a little bit louder, you know, as we try to push them harder and harder. And then again, the same thing for, for the heat rejection. So the difference, one of the questions I've already seen is the difference between the eight speed automatic output and mm -hmm. the six speed manual. Is the six speed manual a carryover from the prior gen truck? Or is it more of a evolution of what already exists? Yeah, it is. It's actually part of our global lineup for, for transmission. So actually the first and second gear, the gear pack is slightly different. Of course, we had to change how the bell housing, how it mates up to the, to the new L4 turbo. Uh, and with that, so we had to actually where the, um, the, the gear, uh, actually the, the shifter connects uh, to the transmission is a little bit farther. So we've got a little bit further throw. Um, and then, you know, on the manual transmission, uh, again, you see just a slight reduction uh, in the power and torque. And we had to do that mainly because we had some crankshaft hammering, and that was a result of our, our kind of heavier flywheel. So of course, we could have taken the mass out of the flywheel, but then our low speed torque wouldn't be as good for crawling and maneuvering. So we felt to knock off, you know, seven to 10 horsepower wasn't a big sacrifice. You're, not, you're really not gonna feel it anyway. Exactly, that's right. Most of our customers are using this, especially in the manual, right? 
you, you're crawling around in the manual, you want to have that torque and that power. What does the eight-speed auto come out of? Is it your global eight-speed auto gearbox or is it specific to this? Uh, no, that, that's actually shared across a, a number of different vehicles and or the, I should at least say the core, the core architecture of it is. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Is there, this is sort of a unique opportunity, obviously this is a, a very deep dive on this truck without putting it up in the air and going mm -hmm. through all the slides. What do you want your customers to know? Ignore the PR person standing off camera. What from a technical sure. perspective? You're the chief engineer. Mm -hmm. You've worked on this thing for God know how long, and this is one of the first, it's not purely American developed, mm -hmm. but lead developed That's in right. the US. It's mm -hmm. a huge privilege and opportunity for you, I know. What do you want them to know about your, your baby, basically? Well, fundamentally, this is, you know, foundational to all Toyotas is our QDR, and that was not sacrificed. I know there's a lot of folks out there saying, oh, we got a new powertrain, we got a new frame. Quality, durability, and reliability is, is... Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no yeah, worries. Exactly. Thanks for that. Uh, but that is exactly, you know, that's that's paramount. That's why people buy Tacomas, right? The long residual value. Yeah, they'll they, outlive you. <laughs> that's, that, that's, a, that's the idea. Um, so we have taken incredible measures, obviously, to improve overall frame corrosion. Um, we have done a lot to make sure that uh, these new powertrains are heavily tested. Um, specifically to the turbo. I know that's one that a lot of people get a little bit nervous about, right? And globally, we use turbos quite a bit. They're new, newer to Toyota in North America. They're certainly not new, but uh, I think they're, people are seeing them in, in, in greater uh, abundance now as everybody's sort of reducing the, the overall, you know, uh, displacement in, in, in using turbos. Uh, the key point for here is actually, especially for the truck series, we, uh, we rate and test these to our commercial grade. Uh, and the reason for that is we know that the, the service duties in trucks is, is, is a lot higher. So rest assured, these things are going through all of the durability testing and the same sort of you know testing that we've done throughout our engines and our powertrains uh, forever, so. One of the questions that we get, and this isn't unique to you guys, mm -hmm. um, a lot of these engines, the 2.4, you talk to GM with their new 2.7, you talk to Ford with their four popper as well. They're, I hate to call them compliance engines, but mm -hmm. you, they, they were, you guys were forced to downsize sure. to meet emissions. Mm -hmm. And while emissions are important, you know, mm -hmm. a customer doesn't give a rat's ass if we're both being honest, right? They care about how it drives and what it does for them. So what is the fundamental advantage to a layman that the four popper and the hybrid offers over the three five or three whatever the, the size V6 just replaced? Yeah, that's right. All of these are these trucks are SULEV 30 compliant. You didn't hear Sulev 30 in, in the truck world for a very long time. So to be able to have um, basically uh, a truck that's able to achieve that is, is a hell of an accomplishment from our from our power It is, teams. and I would like my children to see a polar bear someday as well. <laughs> right, exactly, there you go. But as a customer, when you're behind yeah. the wheel, you've, you, you saw the fuel economy, economy mm -hmm. numbers, which are, are impressive for the, the kind of vehicle it is. Mm -hmm. When you're driving it, what advantage does the four popper have over the it's it's really the honestly it's the power and the torque right that's the great part about these trucks um, we pr produce our maximum torque at 1700 rpm and we spent a lot of time with our turbo um, there's a lot of different ways you can go on the turbos and you know we could have made a little bit bigger turbo we could have had better catalog numbers but you know what most people aren't driving at the top end of your horsepower performance right most people are driving somewhere down you know in the in the everyday sort of area and what was important about that is then we decided to i'll call it right size because i don't want to say make it small but we, we wanted to right size that Spool turbo so quick. that's exactly right response and response is what we were really focused on so a little bit smaller knocked off a little bit of power on the top end but we really have that together with our calibration we provide basically more power more torque better emissions and better fuel economy perfect well I really appreciate this, Sheldon. I know this is probably one of the deeper dives you've done so far it's on this been truck. Fantastic, yeah. But I really, really appreciate your time. And again, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon with the first drive of the all new Tacoma.